Hello and welcome back to Cooking with Love. I am Linda Verasso, your host, and I am the culinary arts instructor at Blue Hills Regional. And today, given it's February, there is a very important holiday in February that we all know, and that is Valentine's Day. And when I think of Valentine's Day, I think of chocolate. Of course, truth be told, I think of chocolate just about every single day, but especially on this one. So what we thought we would do today is to show you some great easy chocolate desserts that you can make for somebody you love or just for yourself on that special day. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to make is the molten lava chocolate cake. Now, this is something you get in restaurants all the time. And when you get them, I'm sure you're like me and just thinking, how do they get that melted chocolate inside that cake? You know, do they inject it after it's cooked or, or do they put solid chocolate in there? And then when it bakes, it's all nice and smooth and runny and gooey. And the truth of the matter is it's nothing like that. It's probably one of the easiest things you'll ever make. And uh, in fact, you might even be, I know you're going to be a little surprised at exactly how that chocolate happens. So let's jump right in, shall we? Uh, not only is it an easy recipe to make, but it's actually got very few ingredients in it. And it's, a, and it's only really a two-step process. We have some uh, butter, of course, which we've got here. We're going to start with a st stick of butter. And we have six ounces of chocolate in here. Uh, the chocolate you can use, is, it's kind of up to you. Uh, you know, I would recommend recommend some bittersweet, some semi-sweet. If you have um, a, a, a real um, inkling towards a particular type, by all means, use it. Obviously, your cake uh, that it makes is going to be affected by that flavor, but really it's tough to go wrong. Uh, so what you do is you start by simply putting that six ounces of chocolate into a, a microwave-safe bowl and the stick of butter, and then we're going to go right over here to the microwave, and I'm going to put it in for just one minute. And it's really just long enough for that butter to melt. So we're going to put that in there. And I'm just going to hit that one minute. And I'm going to let that cook. And while that's cooking, we're going to do the second part of it. And that is to make us a, uh, a very pale, um, fluffy egg mixture. And the way that we do that is by taking two regular eggs. And then we're going to add to that two just egg yolks. We're putting those into our KitchenAid. You can see it's affixed with a whisk here because I'm trying to incorporate air. Uh, and then I'm going to add to that just a quarter cup of sugar here that has just a pinch of salt in it. We're going to raise it up, and then we're going to let that go to town for oh, a good four or five minutes. And I'll show you the consistency we're looking for there. It is going to be a, uh, it gets very pale yellow. If you've made creme brulee before, anything like that, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if not, then in fact, you'll see here in just a minute. The sugar that mixes with the egg is what causes that reaction. And uh, I'm going to turn this up a little higher now. And then I hear the microwaves beep. So let's go check that out while this is happening. Just put that on and let that go right up on high speed. It won't take too long for that to happen. So our microwave has dinged. You can see our chocolate is uh, melting here just because of the heat of the butter. And all I'm going to do is take a spatula and move that around a bit. You can use a whisk if you want, but usually the, the heat of the butter is enough that it's going to melt it very simply. And as you can see, that's what's happening here. So we're gonna just put that all together a few more moments and you can see how that's coming together nicely maybe I can move that pan for you it's coming together nicely there's a few little chunks still but again I'll give that a few more seconds of a stir and that should melt nicely and then the last step that we do here is we take the egg mixture and we combine it with the chocolate mixture I'm going to add just a couple tablespoons of flour which will give it a little structure and then we are going to put it into buttered ramekins. You might see here, I just took four little ramekins. I buttered the inside and put just a touch of flour on it. Not too heavy. You want to put them in there and then you want to just let them, uh, you know, shake out the excess flour. You don't want the flour in there. And uh, you'll be ready to go. It's much easier if you put them on a cookie sheet uh, to bring them back and forth to the oven. Now this does require a very hot oven. 
It requires it to be at 450 degrees, which is pretty hot to bake something. But when you're using eggs only as the leavener, that in fact uh, helps. Think of a souffle. Souffles cook at a relatively high temperature too. Um, and that helps those eggs really uh, make the item rise. So our chocolate is completely smooth now. See, you don't need to do it in a double boiler. You don't need to spend the extra time in your kitchen or, or the extra dishes cleaning them afterwards. The microwave, if the butter is, once that butter melts, you're good to go. And then the heat from that will take care of the rest. All right, so that's ready. Let's take a look at, oh, the eggs look perfect, actually. I'm going to shut these off and show you what that looks like. Uh, let me re remove this. And you know how deep yellow the eggs are. Well, right now, as you can tell, it's a nice fluffy mixture. It's very pale yellow. And the eggs have completely incorporated with that sugar and the touch of salt, just a pinch of salt, that we had. So let me move this aside. Bring that over to the sink. And now all I'm going to do is fold that mixture here. I'll do it in this bowl here. Yeah, that should be enough. I'm going to put the egg mixture right in. It's probably easier for you to see it this way than to do it the other. So we'll fold that egg mixture. I like to do that by putting all of it in the pan first. I get all that goodness out of there. You've got to spend a half a second and really clean the inside of your bowl. You want every little last bite of that chocolate dessert. And I'm going to begin folding that together. So really, you see how I'm going underneath and over. Underneath and then back in. You don't want to whip this or beat it too hard because what happened is that as the eggs mix, they incorporated a great deal of air. And the air is what is going to make these rise. So you don't want to deflate those. Uh, so that is why we fold in as opposed to really just, you know, moving it around with the whisk. And all we're trying to do here is incorporate all that chocolate in with the egg. You can see that starting to happen. Uh, and now I'm go while that's got a little bit of a head start, I'm going to put in those couple of tablespoons of flour we mentioned. And we're going to finish moving that all around so it's nice and the same consistency. This will become a deep chocolate color. And these will be, as I said, we're about to put them into the ramekins. They will cook for about 12 to 15 minutes, depending on your oven. And you'll see them rise. Once they rise and it looks like the cake is pretty well formed, um, the, so the inside will remain soft. So there is no injecting here. Once it's cooked, that chocolate in the center of this um, does not cook. It, it kind of just becomes chocolate. And that is the lava part that you get when you see one of these cakes. So what you might be saying to yourself now, which is what I said to myself when I first made these, is, well, wait a minute. You just mixed all kinds of raw egg with chocolate and flour. You put it in a container. You only partially cooked it. Now you want me to eat it? And the truth of the matter is yes. And that's because to be safe, an egg has to cook to 145 degrees. And in fact, that will happen during this process. So while it seems a little strange that you're cooking something that essentially the batter is still in, um, it is actually perfectly safe and amazingly delicious. So we are going to show you that just when it's all said and done. So you see how that has all come together now only by folding it. If you could, I don't know if you noticed, but in the very beginning there was volume up a little bit, maybe another half inch. So the folding does deflate it somewhat, but not, uh, not a ton. So we're going to go with that now. That's all mixed, ready to go. And it's that easy. Now I'm simply, actually, when I bring these over here for you, uh, okay, all I'm going to do right now is take my four ramekins and I'm going to fill them. So I'm going to take it, fill each one. I'll probably get it all over the place, which is something I do when I cook. Most people do, I think. It's not just me. And this makes four nice, 
ramekins full. There we go. Uh, actually, I can fill these up just a bit more. And I'm beeping on my stove here, which means I, I hit some button I should not have. There's actually a little in there. I might have been able to sneak another one out of there. Um, but we're going to go with the four now. Let's fix that little bit of flour we folded in there. Of course, you have to taste it. Yummy. And now what I'm going to do is simply put those over into the um, stove or into the oven, I mean. And let me get a piece of paper towel. I'm going to put these in the oven. Like I said, it's going to take about 12 to 15 minutes. And while I, after I put those in, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to clear this up. And I'm going to show you the next thing we're going to make, which is chocolate pasta that we will serve with a hazelnut cream. I think you're going to like it a lot. So give me a second, and we'll be putting these in, and we'll be right back. I am going to quickly show you how we make the dough for our pasta, our chocolate pasta. And then we are going to, by that time, the lava cakes are probably ready. We'll pull those out of the oven. And while those are cooling, I'll make the pasta sauce and we'll try everything. And that's obviously always the favorite part of the show. So chocolate pasta, again, a lot easier than most people would think. All you need is some flour. And here we have two and a half cups of flour right inside. Uh, we are going to add to that uh, about a quarter cup of a dark or of a cocoa powder. Now, depending on what you like, you are perfectly okay. You can use, I use the special dark, the Hershey's special dark. Um, you can use something else if you'd like. And I'm going to add to that some, uh, I forget how much I got, a quarter cup of powdered sugar here as well. And in fact, uh, just a pinch of salt on that. So all I'm doing right now is kind of mixing that around a bit so that it gets incorporated. Ah, and I make a mess, which again, you've seen the show before, that happens. Um, and I'm just trying to get that so it's pretty well uh, mixed up. And you can see how uh, it, it's pretty uniform. That's really what I'm going for, a uniform mixture. And, you know, if you've ever heard about people making pasta, what you do is you you put a little, you know, you put it on a board, you make a little well in the center, and to that well, you add your eggs, which we're going to do right now. And in this case, you're also going to add about a tablespoon of chocolate syrup. Now, I didn't have any chocolate syrup, so I had to make some. And the way that you make it is probably easier than you would ever think either, too, and that's you just make a simple syrup and add flavoring. So in this case, I, a simple syrup is simply equal parts of water and sugar that you boil. And I added to that probably about a tablespoon of chocolate, of the, that uh, powdered chocolate. And I let it reduce, and I got chocolate syrup. So there you go. To that, then I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. Now, you're probably saying, wait a minute, those aren't real measuring spoons, and they aren't but we all have these, so might as well use it, right? Um, that is actually just a little less than a regular teaspoon would be, so I'm gonna put in a couple more drops. All right, so our dough is ready to go. It's not easy. We're gonna move that aside. I'm using a dough hook here. Ah. And I'm going to put that on, click that down, rise it up, and I'm gonna let that stir slowly at first start incorporating the, um, the eggs and the chocolate and the vanilla all into it. And uh, while that's happening there, I am going to come on over here and I'm going to show you a little bit about the sauce and what we're going to do for that. There are several different sauces you could do for a chocolate pasta. And in this case, we're going to use one that's very uh, near and dear to many people's hearts, which contains Nutella. Nutella is a chocolate hazelnut spread you can get any grocery store you want to. Um, and we're going to use some heavy cream. Um, and if you think about it, you put those two together and it can't be bad, right? And all you do is we're going to put the heavy cream in here. We're going to bring it up to just a simmer. I'm going to add the Nutella. I'm going to stir it all around and we are largely done. All we'll do at that point is pour it on a hot pasta, top it with a few fresh raspberries. If you'd like, you could have some slivered almonds or toasted hazelnuts. You could add that on there too. 
and you will have a wonderful dessert. Of course, the key here is making sure you serve it like a dessert and don't give them a big bowl of chocolate pasta. You want to give just a little bit uh, with a little bit of that sauce, a little bit of the um, raspberries, and you'll have a wonderful dish. Okay? Our molten lava is probably going to be ready any second, too. I'm going to, now this is starting to come together. And what you're looking for here is for it to form a ball. And sometimes that requires just a touch of water, which this very well may do. So I'm going to grab a little. And it's like all the other pastas you've probably ever made in your life, if you have, which means sometimes it needs just a little help coming together. And that little help is in the form of water. So I'm going to pour in just a bit at a time until it starts to get together. And what you'll notice, um, as it does start to come together, you'll look at it and say, gee, that looks dry, or gee, that looks too wet. And whichever the case may be, if it's dry, you can add just a touch more water. And if it's wet, obviously, a touch more flour. But in this case, the best thing to do is go slowly. Go slowly with the water you add. Be patient, because you'll be surprised at how much it will uh, fix the dryness you have if you give it a few seconds to mix. So you can even hear the difference in the machine as it starts to form that ball. So that is starting to come together nicely. I don't want to go too fast on this because then it starts getting all bumpy and this thing will pop off and that's certainly not what we want. Looks like it's a little dry. I'm going to add another tablespoon and I hear the stove or the oven I should say. So I'm going to go over there. Let's check on our molten lavas while that continues to turn. All right, we're going to hit off here. Whoop, and off on the timer. And if you can, oh, those look beautiful. Look at how those came out. They're like mini little souffles. I'm going to bring these right over here so you can see these. That is all you're looking for. It is a beautiful, nice, firm cake. But that inside, in the middle, you'll see momentarily, is in fact nice and gooey and chocolatey. Whoop, and I hear my, ah, see, he's going crazy over here. That's why you have to be careful with that one. All right, so let's put him back on, move back over here and do this first. Clearly that's ready. So I'm going to let these cool. You want these to cool for at least a minute or two. We're going to let them cool for a little longer than that. Um, and if, in fact, you let them cool for too long, then you can always just zap them right before it's time to serve them, and you'll get that molten lava part again, which is often what they actually do at a restaurant, by the way. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do, let me show you this dough here, OK? I'm going to show you how that came out. And this you could knead for a while. Once it starts to come together, you actually want to let it go ahead and mix for a period of time maybe about six or eight minutes. I'm going to take a little shortcut here because I already have some done. So as you can tell, here is that ball of pasta dough that you've got. It gets a little sticky, and that's fine. And what you'll want to do at this point is simply take it, divide it into maybe two, three, four pieces, um, form a disc of some sort. We're going to wrap that in saran wrap or plastic wrap, and then we're going to put it in the refrigerator. You want to let it rest like most pasta doughs should. You want to let it rest for at least 30 minutes in the refrigerator, uh, and it'll become much easier to work with at that point. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is wash my hands. I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to actually get some plastic wrap, wrap that up, pop it in the refrigerator. I did make some already, so I have some that has already been rested. And we'll come back in just a minute. And what we'll do is we'll cook up some of that pasta. I'll make a, a quick little delicious Nutella sauce. And we'll try all the wonderful things we made today. OK, and now we're almost ready. So as I told you, we have our dough in the refrigerator. I had some from before, so this has already been resting. In just a moment, I'm going to show you how we take this and make some pasta noodles out of it. But before we do that, let's show you the sauce we're, gonna, we're going to use with it. We're going to do about equal parts of heavy cream. Obviously, I already have the burner on. Um, we're going to do about equal parts of heavy cream. So in this case, it's about a cup or so. And we're going to let that get warm. We're going to bring that to a simmer, which it pretty much is 
already because it's a wide uh, pan and just a little cream. We're going to add to that, as promised, uh, some Nutella. And that is going to melt into that cream. And you can add as much or as little as you'd like. I said equal parts, but if you don't want it quite that strong, then by all means don't use it. Uh, you know, don't use as much. But it is, uh, it is quite delicious if you simply go with the equal parts. You want to just help that loosen up a little bit. And you can see it's, it's starting to melt. Hopefully you can see that. It's starting to melt into the pan, or into the cream, I mean. And all we're going to do right now is let it, um, let it reduce a bit, and it will become nice and creamy. And that's all it takes, believe it or not, for this sauce. Now, there are also many other types of sauces you could do with this. You could do a cold sauce. Um, take a, equal parts of, of heavy cream, um, like you would for any whipped cream, add some, uh, about the same amount of mascarpone cheese to it, add maybe a little flavoring, whether you want some vanilla, or you could have some strawberry, whatever you want, maybe macerate a few strawberries and put that on top. We're actually going to use a little bit of um, uh, raspberries for ours. But this is pretty well incorporated, so I'm going to let this sit here for a few minutes and begin to thicken. I'm going to keep that down at a relatively low temperature because uh, I don't want it to cook too fast. There we go. New stove. It's always tough. There we go. I don't even know if I'm on the burner. There I am. Okay. Over here, by the way, I have some water ready to go. It's boiling. I'm going to have that ready to go with the pasta. But as you can tell, here is our pasta dough as promised. And we're going to help that a little bit right now. We're going to stretch it out. In fact, I'm going to use a little less because I don't need quite that much right now. Um, just going to make like a dish or, or a couple of desserts amounts with it. You can see I'm putting it on a cutting board. I also have it on some saran wrap. Uh, that just makes life easier in a little while. Um, I'm going to use, I have a, a pretty heavy um, rolling pin here, a marble rolling pin I'm going to use. If that starts to stick, I'm going to just put a piece of saran wrap right on top, which I have waiting for me here. Um, you could use a little flour if you wanted to, to help it from sticking. Um, but I like to try to not have too much flour in my stuff. But it's okay if you're comfortable and you want to add a little more. So I'm just going to roll this out. And in fact, I am going to add the saran wrap right on top of here. I know the makers of saran wrap are happy that I say saran wrap every time. Technically, it's plastic wrap. But let me see. So you got to put a little love into it. you got to give it some, some help here. If you have a pasta machine, by all means, use it. Uh, this is absolutely can go right through your pasta machine. Most pasta machines have numbers from 1 to 7. If I were you, I'd probably stop at five or six for this. You don't want it very, very, very thin. You want it to be able to stand up to some uh, sauce. And so therefore, don't go too thin. You can see it's starting to come together here in a nice thickness. I'll pull that aside. Now I'm going to go right to the board. Okay. I'm going to finish it off here. Ah. I should have some flour here, but again, I'm going to try doing that without. And it's kind of a nice thickness here. It's actually a little on the thicker side, but that's OK. I'm happy with that for my dessert. You can actually stretch it a bit, too. I don't know if you can tell as I'm doing it because of the egg in the batter. It makes it nice and flexible. So that helps, too, in your efforts. Beautiful. Let's take a quick stir on our sauce. You can see how that's starting to come to a nice thickness. It's coating that spoon right there. Oh, that's almost ready. It smells fabulous. I know you can't smell it, but this whole kitchen right now smells like chocolate. So you couldn't get me happier if you tried. All right, beautiful. Water's still boiling. All right, so on your pasta, you can cut this whatever shape you'd like. If you want to cut it in long fettuccine strips 
or thick fettuccine strips, which is what I'm going to do now. What you can do is take it, you just kind of fold it over onto itself so that you don't have to try to make one long straight line. Fold it over, just use a knife of some sort, however thick you want them, okay? In this case, I don't know, I guess I'm going about a quarter to three eighths of an inch wide, All right? And then you're simply gonna unroll those. Now again, probably should have used a little flour. I'm trying not to, but they'll come apart pretty simply. Okay, so we're making, remember, you're not looking to get a lot of this for any one dessert. As you can imagine, think about it. This is like serving somebody pasta for dessert. So as crazy as that sounds, uh, it is chocolate, so it's allowed, um, but you don't want to overdo it, really. We're talking about just a, a couple of ounces of pasta a piece here um, when we do it. It cooks just as fast as regular pasta, uh, homemade pasta cooks, about three minutes. And, uh, and that's really all it takes. So here we are. You can see these beautiful fettuccine things, or fettuccine noodles things that we've made um, simply by folding it over onto itself. All right, and we'll just do a couple more here. Beautiful. This is a great thing to do with the kids. They can sit there. If you have the machine, which I highly recommend, you can definitely just use the machine to do it. Um, and they, you know, having them uh, turn the handle on the machine is something that uh, kids do all the time and love to do. They feel like they're helping, and in fact, they are helping a lot. I remember when I was a kid, I used to have to do it for hours as my grandmothers were making pasta. That was our job. We would do the cranking of the machine. Um, now, of course, they were making a lot more than this, so uh, they had a lot more cranking to do. So anyway, I was sticking together here. There we go. All right. Excellent. Just a couple more. And then, as you can see, perhaps you can see those molten cakes over there. They're yelling at us to, to eat them, so we're going to do that in just a second. Bingo! And you see how beautifully chocolatey looking this is? I mean, how can that possibly be bad? Where'd it go? Eh, I think that was the end. There we go, a little ones. All right, so here I am. I'm going to get a pot holder here. I'm going to take this cover off and drop the pasta in the water. As I said, it's only going to take a few moments to cook, so we're going to let it do that. And the sauce, if you can see over here, is really ready to go. In fact, I can shut that off. I'm going to let it sit on the warm burner. So here, we're just going to pop this right in the boiling water. No need to salt your water. There is a touch of salt right in the pasta, so we'll go with that. We're going to stir that around so it doesn't stick a bit. And we're going to let that cook. Okay, it's going to boil in a minute here. While that's boiling, I'm going to do one of these molten cakes. So for these, when you get them out of the oven, let them cool for at least one minute. And when you let them cool for one minute, just as soon as they come out, just take a butter knife and just slowly go around the edge. That's all you need to do to loosen it. In fact, I hardly had to do that at all. Because of the butter that you put on it to begin with, that should not be a hard thing to do. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take a dessert plate. I imagine you'll have a better one than this, but for now, you're going to flip it over and then you're going to take it out. That wasn't too hard now, was it? Then you're going to take some vanilla ice cream. And on the vanilla ice cream, you're going to take a scoop and put that right there on top of your lava cake. And let's hope when we break into this, there's some molten lava in it. Or else this was a total bust, wasn't it? Whoop. Whoa, that one, it's not as melty as I want it to be. Whoa, where's my glasses? There we go. He's jumped up a little bit. Oh, 
We may have a failure here. There we go. It's, it's melty, but not nearly as molten as it should be. I'll have to look at one of those. So let that, you just want to cook it for just a second less. But let me tell you something. That's going to be yummy. Mm. Whoa, what's going on over here? There we go. Um, that is absolutely delicious. One of these other guys probably have a little more molten in there for me. I should turn that around for you. And you can see the, the moltenness here, but not quite as much as one would hope. So we'll have to do that a little bit less less time. Um, part of the issue could be convection versus uh, a regular bake. Mm. But it tastes exactly how it's supposed to. So we'll go with that. And now we have our pasta that's at the top of our dish here. You can see uh, top of the water. It has, um, it has cooked just fine. I don't know if you can see in the top of that pan. It has just cooked up. And you're going to pull it right from the water. Right into there. And you're going to toss that around. And if you think about all that chocolatey nutness right there, you really need the raspberries to help cut that a bit. Okay? So you just toss that a little bit into your um, sauce. And we'll take it out just however much you want. Again, you do not want to serve a lot of this. This, you know, you just take and maybe that much, maybe. You know, that much, maybe you'll put a, just a couple raspberries on top of it like that. If you want, you could definitely serve it with ice cream. Um, it's completely up to you. You could also sprinkle that with a little powdered sugar. Um, and however you want that, you could even use this sauce that we made as a drizzle over your molten lava cake. But in any event, all you have to do at this point is give it a try. So let me do that for you. So I got that pasta, the chocolate fettuccine. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's quite delicious. With the flavor from the, the raspberry that helps cut that real sweetness uh, with a little bit of the acid. But that's quite delicious. So I would highly recommend that. Now before I let you go, let's open up these other lava cakes and see what we got. Because I really want you to see how that moltenness happens. And unfortunately, sometimes, depending on the oven, it may not. OK, and here we go. Let me just cut. Oh, I can tell right away that that's what we're looking for. Look at that lava right there flowing out. That is the lava portion of the molten cake that we're talking about. So luckily, they didn't all flop on us. This is what we're hoping for. You can also make this a little bit ahead of time. If you'd like to, pop them in the refrigerator and then just give them a quick zap before you're ready to serve it to your guests. But there you go. All right, so that's our, uh, our Valentine's Day episode. We have uh, wonderful chocolate things for you to try. And hopefully you will do that because, you know, there is no other day that's better for cooking with love than Valentine's. So happy Valentine's Day. Happy February.